Okay, so for this afternoon's shoot, I thought I'd take you with me as much as I can. I'm in Noosa Heads at the Point Breaks. There's a really nice southeast swell running this week and southeast winds as well, which makes all the beaches along the Sunshine Coast pretty messy. But in the Noosa Points, it's perfectly groomed and there's some nice looking waves coming through. And the problem with that is that everyone knows about it and it's nearly impossible to get a park around here. So I'm currently driving around the Noosa National Park, hoping that someone has had enough of the day and they'll let me have their park. But it's proving to be probably the biggest challenge I'll have today. So I'm gonna shoot water today, not from the land. Um, I surfed here yesterday and there was quite quite a vicious sweep, uh, sweeping you along the points. So I don't know how I'm gonna go with my fins, uh, just me and my fins and my camera, but I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna jump, jump into the top of the points, which is tea tree, and then naturally get washed down um, through down to main beach. It's like a couple of Ks. I don't know how long it is, but it feels like it's probably, what, two, two or three Ks worth of, uh, worth of points to sweep along. So along the way, I'm hoping to get a few hookups with some surfers. There'll be plenty of people taking waves, so I won't be short on that. And uh, try and get some photos. I've decided to take out my 50 mil lens today. It's sort of an in-between lens. It's the lens I go to if I'm not quite sure if I want to go wide or I want to go long lens. So I'm just going to go with a um, straight 50 mil. It's sort of good for everything, the 50. It's one of my favorite lenses to shoot from the water. So when in doubt, the old 50 mil just comes out. And uh, see how I want around that? Perfect. <laughs> All right, so still looking for a park here. None the closer at getting out there and the light is fading. We've got like patchy cloud and there was such good light before. I wish I was out there. But it looks like it's gonna go behind cloud, so I don't know how I'm gonna go today. So by the time I did get a park, the sun was getting fairly low, so I decided to jump off the rocks at National Park rather than walk around to Tea Tree Point. The clouds parted, enough to let in some beautiful late afternoon sun, and I didn't want to miss the light, so I opted to just get out there and make the most of the light rather than chasing the bigger and better quality waves on the outside points. The inside points were much smaller, and the chance of a barrel shot were almost zero, so the 50mm lens choice was pretty well suited to the conditions, really. The light was improving by the minute with some low golden rays lighting up the surfers who were backdropped by this beautiful, the beautiful trees of Noosa National Park and some nicely lit clouds to give that nice closed-in feeling. I love it when the clouds build up in the opposite direction of the sun. It helps give a better exposure and looks more dramatic than a clear sky. This shot here really shows off what I'm talking about. The surfer is perfectly lit from the low angle sun and the clouds help keep a similar exposure level and density to the foreground water and the trees. Had this been a clear sky, it would have given a brighter background look. Instead, the surfer is the brightest and brightest lit part of the scene, which to my eyes looks really good. When you get this combo of light and backdrop, it starts taking on the appearance, the appearance of a studio, your own outdoor natural studio with so much room to move. You really couldn't set the lights up much better in a controlled environment. Shooting with the light is always the obvious choice, but as some of you may already know, I'm a massive backlight fan. So when the sun got low enough in the sky, I tried to more position myself behind the surfer so I could get them riding into that golden glow. That's the beauty of shooting from the water over shooting on the land. You can quickly mix up the angles to get a more varied, a more varied shoot than if you were shooting from the beach. On the points, it's a little easier to do than from the land, but there is no denying that you get more variation from the water. So I was happy enough with the light that I was getting, but then a rainbow decided to come out to play. So how good is this, I thought. I didn't really end up getting a, a shot that I love of the rainbow. All the elements didn't quite line up in the short time that it was out, 
but I did everything I could to include these, this rainbow in the shot. Going for that vertical format obviously made the most sense. Uh, so I composed the surfer at the bottom of the frame to ensure that I got all that high reaching rainbow in. It wasn't a super vivid rainbow, but when the heavens gift you something like this, you have to try and make the most of it. And then once the rainbow faded, the sunset color started to take hold. From that moment on, all my shots were looking straight to the west. I'm a massive color lover, so I was trying to make the most of these, these colorful clouds that were lighting up. The light was also getting uh, so low, so I normally focus more on the surf lifestyle images. And I asked these two if, if I could use their silhouettes in the photo. They both said yes, so I proceeded to shoot a heap of angles in the five minutes of color that I had left. These moments are the ones that I love as a surfer. Having a full day of waves and then watching the sun set over the ocean before catching my last wave in the fading light. It's a feeling that I love more every time it happens. So when I'm photographing, I'm always trying to capture that exact feeling. So by the time I got a park, I had less than one hour of light, but in this 40 or 50 minutes, I managed to get a rainbow, a fairly good sunset, and some front lit action photos. So my when in doubt, bring the 50 mm lens out, really worked to treat this time round. It's really a versatile lens. I always suggest to students to get good at using a 50 mm lens early on. It really helps understanding uh, positioning, composition, and seems to yield always some great results. If you would like to stay in touch with my photography content, there is a link below where you can join my newsletter mail out and of course you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, thanks for tuning in and please if you have any challenges or ideas for videos with photography, please let me know and uh, speak soon. See you next week. Cheers legends.